All right, good morning, guys. How's everybody doing today? Can everybody hear me? Good. And all right. So today's message um, is called, um, for you all who are taking notes, is called <laughs> True Love or True Lust. So, um, so I came up with this message because two reasons. I was inspired by um, this person I knew back when I was in high school and a very tough decision I had to make. Uh, did I really love that person or did I want more from this person than just love, you know? Oh, and I'm not talking about, you know, oh, the birds and the bees. I'm talking about, you know, when you hear the word lust, it's not just, oh, dude, the gross things. No, lust means, in my understanding, yearning. So, it is, uh, so my yearning was the yearning to be normal. Like, this girl will be my, you know, this is going to be my wife one day, maybe one day, and that will make me normal, right? Yeah. So I had the yearning that, like, she, she'll make me normal. Like, dude, like... Like, who'd marry their, you know, their, how many stories you hear where they marry this, the, you know, the sweetheart and stuff. And, um, and the second reason was, yeah, lust is a big problem. <laughs> and if you're a guy and you don't admit to that, then you are lying. You are 100% a liar. <laughs> a, guy, and guy, a guy here told me that if you don't struggle with lust one way or another, you are a big fat liar. <laughs> so don't be like this guy. Uh, I knew a guy in high school. He was, um... He's like, I don't look at women. I'm like, you don't look at women at all. You're either gay or insane. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, let's see, uh, so let's see five ways that Jesus loved in the Bible. So, number one, he, uh, he used words of affirmation. So, if you would, uh, so in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 19, it says, now Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do you say the Son of Man is? And, he, and they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others say Je Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Then he said to them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter replied to me, You are Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed you, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood is not revealed to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you that, that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates I shall not and the hell the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. it. I give you the keys to the kingdom. And whatever you bind on the earth will, shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So you see that G Jesus used these words of affirmation to, to, um, to Peter here er, because he loves him. He loved his answer that he has. He saw his heart, heart that, you know, that he's not going to be like everybody else. He's not going to, it's like, oh, you know, I could be like, oh, Jesus was some prophet. Jesus was some... But no, he gave the true, right answer, and he said, you know, he loved him by saying, I will make my rock upon you. Oh. Mm. So, number two here is acts of service. So, found, uh, now we're going to skip to Matt, Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 to 17. Hmm. 21 So verse 12 says in verse in chapter 21 says and Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons he said to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. And the blind and the lame come to the temp into the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things he did, and the crying, crying out to the temple, Hosanna, the son of David, they were indignant. And they said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read 
out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies. You prepared prizes, or prepared praise, and leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany and lodged there. So in this one, you see that Jesus cleaned out the temple. He did an act of service for the people. He said, this is, my, this is, this is the place where you worship God and do things for the, for the needy. And you, you, took, you took it and you, you made it into a, not a place like that. You made it a place of robbers and, and people who are greedy and stuff like that. So he did that, them an act of service, right? Right? So another, so the third reason, the third way to love is quality time. So we're going to go to Mark chapter 2, verse 13 to 17. <clears throat> All right. Mark 2, 13. He went out again beside the sea, and the crowd was coming to him, and he was teaching them. And he passed by and saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And he reclined at the table at his house, in his house. Tax collectors and sinners were re reclining with Jesus and his disciples. For there was many who followed him. And scribes of the Pharisees, when they saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, he said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus heard it, and he said to them, Those who have no need of a physician, but who, those who are sick, I call I came not I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. There's, so Again, you see, God, uh, you see Jesus here. He's hanging out with people. He's spending time with people. Oh, he's hanging out with the sinners because he loves them. He wants to spend time with them. He, he wants the, them to know that there's someone out there that loves him and they're not just dirty and stuff like that. Yeah. So number four on the list of love is, is giving gifts. So this one's going to be a little bit longer here, but... We'll go to Acts chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 6 says, So they come together, and they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons when the Father has fixed by his own authority but you will receive power in the Holy Spirit upon you, you know, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all of Judea and Samaria, and all of the earth, end of the earth. There. So he's about to give them a gift of the Holy Spirit here. here. So what does that mean? So th this one's important to me, so I got another verse to cover the gifts. of the, What does that actually mean? So oh, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4 and 10. Through ten. <laughs> now there are various gifts of the same spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but the same God who empowers them to everyone. To each of them is given a manifestation of the spirit coming from God. For one is given through the spirit of utterance of wisdom. Another is utterance of knowledge, according to the same spirit, to other, to faith, by, by the same spirit, to, an, to another gift of healings, and by the one spirit, another to work in of miracles, to another of prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another a various kind of tongues, and to another, an interpretation of tongues. Things. All of these are empowered by the one and the same Spirit who apportions each, to each individual as he wills. So this is very important about gifts. You know, I, I wanted to give a little bit extra because I'm like, dude, what does the Holy Spirit do? He gives you all that thing, all those things, you know, the miracles, the healing, um, all that list right there. Amen. there. And so that's really important that Jesus gives you this gift. To, to go out and do his will. You know, we're, we are the Jesus on earth. Like, we're not God. We're not God by any means. 
And that's not, not what I'm saying. I'm saying we're the Jesus on earth. 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 That we should be so close to him that people might see our scars and the holes in our hands that are like, dude, that guy loves really good. Like, but he's all hurt and banged up. Yeah. And that's the whole point. Yeah. So, number five. We have... Number five, we have physical touch. So we're going to Luke chapter 4, verse 38 to 41. Chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 38. And he arose and left the synagogue, and he entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever, and they appealed to him on her behalf. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever and left her. And immediately she rose again and began to serve them. Now when the sun was sitting, all those have any, who had any sick and various disease brought them to him and laid his hands on every one of them, and healed them. And demons also came out of them, crying, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them, and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. So Jesus, he put his hands on people to love on people, to pray for them. And, and through that power of you know, his healing hands, and you know, the, word, the authority he had to pray for people, he healed people, and he got rid of demons. So, you can see, the, by the way we love people, really study how you like to love people. Me, personally, I like, I, like, um, I like to give people gifts, and I like, you know, spend time with people. So, realize that. So, but how does the world take this love that Jesus has given us and twist it in a way into lust? Well, obviously, number one, as, you know, physical touch, you know, sex out of sight in marriage, that's obvious. Yes. And for you who are married, I'm going to tell you something, I hope you agree with me, but sex is not love, it is a product of love, but it is not love. Would you agree with me? Who would agree with that statement? Sex, sex is not love, it is a product of your love. Just to, <laughs> that, you know, and knowing other people's boundaries, you know, with that, you know, with touching someone, like, you don't want to go up to every random stranger and start hugging them, right? I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Maybe it's what they need. Maybe it's not. <laughs> so, acts of service. How does the world, how does the world twist this? Acts of service. Yes. So, you uh, do the good thing for the wrong reasons. You know, oh, I only do it for the money, or I only do it to a means to ends, or it's your self-righteous, I, I, I put in quotations, or spite. You, you do it because, oh, you know, the wife will shut up, right? <laughs> you know, I'll just do it. You don't do, you, you, you don't do the dishes because you love her. You do it because she won't stop complaining, right? So do it because you love her, not because you're trying to get something out of it, you know? So... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I love you in this way, you know. That's not what love is. You know, if you go into, I want to say, there's a passage in, uh, I want to say, I forgot where it was. Um, dang, I had a blank on that one. <laughs> It'll come back to me, maybe. But, um, so, uh, number three, words of affirmation. So, right here, don't let your words be destructive. You know, don't just say things just to say them. Words can hurt. All right. Don't, don't, don't be like, oh, sticks and stones. No, words can hurt. I, for, for someone who liked to talk a lot of trash in high school uh, and I made jokes, I can tell you, dude, I could have really messed up someone's mind with my, the words I spoke. And, and do not be manipulative. It's like, oh, if you really loved me, man, uh, if you, you would take me out to lunch today, man, like, man, that would be really nice, you know. So, <laughs> so don't get caught up in that, man. Don't. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but in, so number four, we got, um, how does the world 
you know, how does the world twist gifts? Like, come on, gifts are awesome. Um, so, um, you might not give gifts to people you like, or, or, uh, and uh, sometimes you kind of get in con, you know, it's like, well, you didn't give me, you didn't give me anything in return, and so don't don't expect something in return when you're when you're giving your gifts to some people. Yes. Yeah. Well, always do it, you know, and always think of the person and of what they might like or need when when you're giving the gifts. So uh, number five, when you when you spend quality time. Be 100% attentive, 100% attentive. And I was teaching this to a bunch of kids, uh, a bunch of teenagers the other day, so this might be more for them. But give your people 100% of your time. Don't be scrolling on your phone, watching TV. Really, really be with them, listen to the conversation, and focus on them. And don't do it just because, well, it's family time, you know, I guess I'll just spend a couple minutes. Well, I'm not going to be, you know, 100% attentive, you know, but, um, yeah, yeah, and, and also be nice, don't, 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 you know, be nice, you know, that, that might be more for Thanksgiving and stuff, you know, <laughs> be nice to the people you love, like, you're only going to have them for a certain time, you know, be nice to them, you know, so that, you know, so uh, I got some questions here for you um, um, to think about. Uh, for the next couple minutes, so uh, think about how the way you like to be loved, you know, and you know, do people know how you like to be loved, you know, because like if I do not like to be loved with acts of service, because like my mom, my mom does this acts of service, like dude, mom, I don't need you to help me all the time, you know, yeah. like I'll, I if when if I ask you to help me, then then I'll then I appreciate, it, you know. And um, second question is, how, how do you like to be loved? And second question, how do you not like to be loved? So uh, third one, how do other people know you love them? Do people know you love them? Or are you just some just random guy? Like, are you talking to people? I know Jason, he talks to everybody he meets. <laughs> everybody knows this man loves him. <laughs> so, does, you know... Yeah, do pe like really? I'm gonna ask again. Do, do pe how do people know you love them? Do they know that you love them? And how do you tell the difference between love and lust? Like, how do you tell when you're crossing lines that should not be crossed? When it comes to your love, they say love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious. There's, there's a scripture for that. I just don't, I forgot. I forgot. But look, is is Joe patient? Is Joe kind? Is Joe, uh, the answer is yes for him because, you know, but he, he doesn't have to ask that question, but maybe you have to ask that question. So I encourage you, love somebody the way you do best. Figure out how you love people the best. Like, I'm not, I, I'm not one for hugs. I don't give people, I, I like getting hugged, but I don't like giving people hugs because if I give the wrong person a hug, they're going to give me a black eye yeah. or they might call the cops. <laughs> So I hope you learned something from a single guy about love. You know, what would a single guy know about loving people? If no one's going to love me, then why would I love others? Well, because Jesus loved you first. And, Je Amen. and uh, uh, newsflash, Jesus was a single guy. No, yeah. no, Mary Magdalene was not his, his lover, all right? <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> but he loved people. Oh, because God loved us, and he only did what the Father did. In love. So that's why I want to encourage you with this this morning. So yeah, that girl, I uh, I broke up with her because she wanted to have this different type of relationship. She wanted to have a uh, she wanted to have this three way relationship type of thing. I was like, no, that's not right, man. So I I gave up my chance of being normal and having this relationship with a girl for righteousness. Like, who would do such a thing? Who would give up someone you love? Slash lust over after, if you really didn't have a you know a relationship with Jesus, so I gave it up and it was painful, and I love the songs we did today where it's like, um, Lord, show me how build my life upon Your love, 
and uh, it was talking something about the heart, you know, where love comes from, you know. As a guy who has gotten his heart smashed into a million pieces and only God knows where they are <laughs> and how to fix them. Yeah, that's so true. So I encourage you to love people, you know, and hopefully you feel my love by, you know, speaking here today and, you know, my, you know, the way awkwardly I can love people, but, you know. But thanks, guys. Let me pray for you guys. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for these men. I pray that they learn how to love like you love, love, and they can receive your love, and they know that you love them, Lord, no matter who they are, no matter what they've done, and Lord, and they can share it. And it goes down like dominoes, you know, and it spreads like a wildfire, and not a destructive fire, but a fire of love, Lord. I, I pray over them, their families, that that they're all right. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.